Man, oh man, I got a great video for you guys today. We're going to talk about Milos being a guest on Jay Cutler's podcast on YouTube. They talk about Milos's diaries because Milos kept these diaries from 1987 all the way to 2003 when he was competing as a professional bodybuilder. And Milos logged every day. The training, the diet, the drugs, and guess what slipped into one of these diaries? Someone else's protocol for something. Nasser El Sambade. Now, if you guys don't know who Nasser is, Google him up. He was one of the freakiest, biggest, nastiest bodybuilders there ever was in the history of bodybuilding. And I certainly don't mean the guy was mean or anything when I say nasty. He was just an incredible bodybuilder. And they talk about what Nasser was taking, or at least one of the drugs that he was taking. Wait till you hear how much he was taking. All right, guys, before we get started, don't forget to check out OldSchoolLabs.com. We have amazing products on sale for Amazon's Prime Special Sale. Today is the last day. Take advantage of it up to 50% off. If you don't buy anything today from Old School Labs, well, you're never going to buy then. And if you do have Old School Labs, well, stock up on your favorite products. All right, so we're going to talk about one of my favorite things right now. PEDs in bodybuilding. And I also want to share my opinion at the end about this entire segment and how this could really, really influence the younger kids to do something crazy that they probably weren't thinking about doing before because maybe they idolized these bodybuilders in this video. But I want to play the clip first. So here we go. Something you, you might be interested in. Well, this is pretty. Okay, pretty look, look at this one. This is, this is Nasser's plan. 96. <laughs> Why is it in your book? Yeah, because we, we were talking together. We were. Did you hear Milos's chuckle there? This is Nasser El Somebody cycle, and he slides the book over to Jay Cutler, and he goes, <laughs> you know what that means? It was probably the entire fucking page. What, what's the most mind-boggling on there? Well, he would go crazy sometimes on, on a drill like you. You were doing a four, right? did for at my peak, yeah. Okay. All right, so did you guys just catch that? He went crazy with the Anadrols. Now, I've been crazy with Anadrols. I've done three. That's 150 milligrams a day. That would make my head go boom, 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 like a subwoofer, okay? Jay just admits on the podcast he's done four. That's 200 milligrams a day because they come 50 milligram tabs. That is a lot. Three, two is a lot. You don't need more than one, to be honest with you. You get amazing results with real Anadrol at 50 milligrams. Now, I did excessive things. I talked about this in the past. It's irrelevant now. But wait until you hear how much Nasser was taking. Listen to this. Uh, he went as high as 10. No. But a lot of How drum can you eat? How can he eat? Fuck eating. How was he walking around taking 10 Anadrol a day? My stomach would literally fall out of my asshole if I took 10 Androls in one day. I can't imagine what his liver and kidney values and enzymes looked like after taking 10 Androl a day for God knows how long Nasser took that for. I can't even imagine the damage those pills were doing 10 a day. I can't imagine taking 10 a day. I would actually have an anxiety, full-blown panic attack probably heart attack, looking at a blister packet of 10 Anadrol and going, I'm gonna take all of these in one day. I can't imagine buying a hundred pack of Anadrol and using them all in 10 days. That is a lot of motherfucking Anadrol, people. Whew! No wonder Nasser didn't make it very long in his life because of the amount of drugs he was taking. And all of you guys know, but there's a ton of theories on the internet of how much Nasser was doing. This is his cycle. That's his cycle. Whatever's in that book is the real cycle. I'll bet all the money in the world on it. That's the real cycle. And if he was willing to take 10 Anadrol, you have to think, what was he willing to do then with everything else? Now, maybe he didn't go as crazy as we think, but obviously Nasser was an extremist when it comes to steroids. And if you look at his physique, well, there you go. The proof's right there. The guy took a lot. 
but also he didn't live very long. So is the trade-off worth a couple years of being this amazing bodybuilder and then dying so early on? Is it worth it, guys? So if you're watching this video and you're like, oh, Nick Tregilli took three Anadrol. Jay Cutler, four-time Mitchell Levy, took four Anadrol. They're both still walking around, but Nasri took 10. Maybe I should probably take like three to five because they're still walking around. They're okay so far. Let me tell you guys something. What I did, what Jay did, what Nasser did, what Milos did, it's irrelevant. We have gotten this far because we're lucky. We didn't get this far because we're any different than you or anyone else. We got this far because we were lucky enough to escape it so far. It doesn't mean you're going to have the same outcome because you took maybe two Anadrol or three Anadrol or even one Anadrol. No one is safe using PEDs. And just because you duplicate or replicate someone else's cycle, drugs, uh, you know, training, diet, whatever they're doing, doesn't mean you're going to yield the same results. It's absolutely idiotic of you to think like that. You could get severe kidney and liver damage from taking one Anadrol. It doesn't mean you're gonna be safe because you're using less. You guys have to get that through to your head. It doesn't mean you're gonna live forever because you didn't take steroids as long as someone else. It doesn't mean because you didn't go to 5,000, 10,000 milligrams of steroids. It doesn't mean you're gonna live longer. Don't really know until you cross that bridge. There may be a day you wake up and all of a sudden everything is just shutting down on you. And you know what's gonna happen when that day comes? If it does come, unfortunately, the first thing you're gonna think about is motherfucking steroids I did when I was in my 20s. You're gonna immediately have regret for that. So do you wanna avoid having those regrets and being as safe as possible, using moderate doses, and at least knowing you're doing everything you can the safest way possible. Instead of going through life after bodybuilding, because eventually it's gonna end. You have to live with all that. Every day you have to think about all those crazy things you did as a kid. Would you rather go through life having anxiety about what you did? Or would you rather go through life knowing you did everything to the best of your ability, to as safe as possible because you're conscious of your health? That will give me peace at night. I'm telling you guys right now, I don't have peace at night knowing I did what I did in my 20s as a professional bodybuilder. I don't. I'd be lying to you if I told you I had peace at night and every day and mental clarity from everything I did. Every single time someone drops dead in this sport or just from steroids in general, it's a bad day for me because I think I'm next. And that's just the reality of the situation. And if you don't think like that as a retired bodybuilder, then honestly, there's something wrong with you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, every single bodybuilder that was professional at the highest level at one point or pushed the envelope at one point, maybe didn't make it, they think about those things. And if they deny that, they're just lying to you. They're pretending. I think about it every day. It's impossible not to think about it. And guess what? Eight, nine years later from being retired from bodybuilding, I'm still facing the repercussions of pushing myself so hard. No, I don't have kidney failure, I'm not on dialysis, I don't have liver problems, I don't have heart problems, but I have gut problems. I have serious inflammation in my body still I'm trying to fix. I had adrenal problems for a long time. Yeah, I had some kidney and liver issues when I first retired, but I cleaned that up pretty quickly. It's never safe to do steroids. You understand that? Even at the lowest dose. But at least if you do things as safe as possible, you can at least live your life after bodybuilding with a clear mind, and you could go to bed at night knowing you did everything you can to do it as safe as possible. So don't get influenced by this. Don't get excited to go try 10 Anadrol or 8 Anadrol or 7 or 5 or 4 or 3 or 2. Do what you think is best and as healthy as possible for you. You decide. Don't get influenced by someone else's cycle or some coach telling you to do something crazy. You have to live with that, no one else. Have a good one.